Men, do you feel you have to struggle to do what is right? To counter the flesh, we need God's grace. I'm Brian Patrick. Welcome to Crossing the Goal, where we tackle tough men's issues. We're continuing our series on spiritual warfare, the flesh, our topic this time on Crossing the Goal. We are kicking off our show on the flesh as we continue our Crossing the Goal series on the spiritual warfare, and it's time to meet our Crossing the Goal team. The Vice President of Renewal Ministries, Peter Herbeck, Founder and President of Focus, Fellowship of Catholic University Students, Curtis Martin, and All Pro, former wide receiver and NFL coach, Danny Abramowitz, author of Spiritual Workout of a Former Saint. I don't know about you guys, I'd rather be a future saint than a former saint. <laughs> well, he's he's, he's got both. Right. You know, yeah, he's got to be in the shade. All right, Peter, handle our kickoff duties, if you will. You know, this whole series we're doing is on uh, the spiritual battle. We talked the first show on the, on the great war that we're fighting. Last week, we talked about the power of the world. That's the external forces set against us. This week, we're talking about the flesh, the part of us that connives with that external, those external forces that brings us down and helps trap us in this battle? You know, this battle of flesh, the area that uh, I think, a big area is the lust. You know, and, and it, it's a, a heck of a battle goes on yeah, with that. Big, one. big time. And if you think about it, why is it? It's because it feels good and it plays into our ego. Now the struggle to fight it is very difficult because it doesn't seem much fun to turn that down. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know, that we're trapped into something and we don't, we don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. No, Danny, it doesn't, it doesn't stop with lust. That, that is every man's battle in a certain sense, but we also have to recognize that we're talking about greed. We're oh, talking yeah. about anger. These are the passions that, as Peter said, the world uh, draws us, and we find something inside of us that actually kind of wants to go along, that yeah. rebellious streak that pulls about it. We need to figure out how to uh, understand those and then how to fight against them so we can become who we really ought to be. Yeah. Yeah. How do you fight the flesh? Well, you start with a really good game plan. We've got one for you next with Peter and Curtis here on Crossing the Goal. You know, the, the best leaders that I've really ever been around in this business are not guys that says, you know, follow me. You know, it, it's guys says that, 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 that come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Here's what I'm going to do. You are welcome to come with me and do this. You know, if you're constantly... You know, telling somebody, here's what you should do, here's what you should do, here's what you should do, and you yourself are doing something different, or you yourself are going in another direction, that is the, that's the worst type of leadership. It's, it's so counterproductive that it, 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 it is, it's destructive. We're back. I'm Curtis Martin with Focus, and this is Peter Herbeck with Renewal Ministries. We're talking about spiritual warfare, specifically the flesh, and how we participate in our own undoing. Right. I'd like to turn to the Catechism, number 401, and hear what it has to say. We're told, For when man looks into his own heart, he finds that he is drawn towards what is wrong, and sunk in many evils which cannot come from his good Creator. This is the mystery of iniquity within us. Yeah. And so we, like the world around us, is conniving, working against God, a dimension of the world, the good world that God created. There's a dimension of forces in that world that are set against the kingdom of God. I find similar forces in myself. Paul says, I end up doing the things I don't want to do. You know what I mean? I want to do what's right at times, but I end up not doing what's right. The desiring's there, right. the doing is not. So there's a drive within me that's set against the kingdom of God itself. It's within me. So it's that desire for ego, uh, me first, my will be done, my own personal pleasure, my own vanity being fulfilled, all of that. There's something in me. And so Jesus says that needs to be put to death because like the Trojan horse, it's inside you helping bring you down from within. Yeah, there's a great list. If we go to Galatians chapter 5, Peter, we can see this is a great examination of conscience for all of us to look at and say in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 19, it begins, at, first of all, an examination of the, the deeds of the flesh, and then it contrasts them with the deeds of the Spirit. Let's look at the ones for the flesh. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, 
disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness. And all of these things are deeds of the flesh, which we're told lead to death. And there's something inside of us that is self-destructive. Yeah. And literally, if we follow those drives, we will die. We'll die in sin, and we'll die eternally, and we'll end up in hell. That's literally what Scripture reveals to us. And, it, and, and Jesus came to deal with that sin problem, the weakness of the flesh. And what does he do? He gives us his spirit. Paul says those are the deeds of the flesh, but the deeds, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, what the Spirit wants to produce in us is a new power, a new capacity, stronger than the flesh in us, that makes us capable of saying yes first to God, to love, to love of God, to love of neighbor, to literally give us, Scripture says, a new heart, a no. new source within us of decision, and a new freedom to live the way we've been called to live. So let's look at this, because you said a couple of things there that I think actually need to be restated because they're not stated nearly enough. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is we're playing for all the marbles. Yeah. If we give in to the deeds of the flesh, we're going to die. We're going to die here and now, but we're going to die forever and go to, to hell forever. And we don't hear enough about that. And we don't want to spend a you know, whole lot of time on talking about hell, but sometimes by not talking enough about it, we forget it's there. Well, Jesus talked about it quite uh, a bit. Quite we a forget bit. that, but yeah. it's true, yeah. And uh, it, it, by way of comparison and contrast, Heaven is the alternative, and we're yeah. playing for all the marbles. If we put to death the deeds of the flesh and live in the power of the Spirit, we all of a sudden begin to walk like sons and daughters of God. And now all of a sudden, we're not only going to live in this world, but triumph over this world, but we'll go to live with God forever in heaven. Yeah. This is truly amazing. We stand yeah. at a fork in the road. It's great stuff. It's life. If you don't know the bad news, you're not going to appreciate the good news. And this is really, 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 really bad news yes. and really, 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 really good, good news. news. Here's Paul echoing. You're echoing what Paul is saying from Romans chapter 8. He says, So then, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received now a spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit Himself bearing witness in our spirit that we're children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. That's so good there's news. literally Jesus gives us our own, His own spirit to begin to cry out in us, Father, Father. We experience a love, a new capacity, a new power, and a desire out of love to live differently. It's interesting to see because if Pope Benedict's first mass, first homily, says this to the young people of the world. He says, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Amen. And that's the power of the gospel is to recognize the world's going to offer us things and our flesh is going to respond to that because our flesh yeah. was made for this world, yeah. but our soul was made to live with God and our soul has the capacity, if it dies in union with Christ, to bring our body with yeah. it. And so we, we're really giving our body a, a, a reward that it alone doesn't desire. Yeah. It desires to revel in the things of this world and we have to say, look at higher things, look at greater things. And Jesus is saying, look, I'm not coming to bind you to take away your freedom. I'm coming to give you the power, the power to experience what real freedom is, to fulfill your destiny. And the greatness you're talking about is a capacity to love God and love neighbor. And the great wisdom of the church is to recognize that the flesh is actually supposed to cooperate and lead us uh, to heaven with, the, with our souls. But we have to recognize one thing about the flesh. It makes a great servant and a terrible master. Yeah. Brian? All right, Curtis and Peter, that game plan is smoking, Coach. Have you ever seen those bumper stickers? Eternity, smoking or non-smoking? Exactly. <laughs> well, our red zone, hopefully, is non-smoking. You know why? Because we're going to flesh things out. All right. We're heading to the red zone next with Coach. And we'll meet up with Peter and Curtis next on Crossing the Gold. But we've got a game plan now for battling the flesh, so we're in the red zone. And I want to share with you guys, some of you know my story a little bit. I've been in this transformation process for the better part of 20 years. And the thing I've noticed most recently is that where I've gone from having to do the right thing, knowing I have to do the right thing, to really wanting to do it. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. I mean, that's part of what you're saying is what we just read up there, Romans 8, where Paul says, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you had all these drives in you first that you knew you had to be subdued, so you're yeah. trying to work so hard you to work change. Like, I gotta change, I gotta get to change, <laughs> and it's so hard. Yeah, and you feel guilty, and you're yeah. going to confession, and it's 
I'm never going to get there, through this stuff. That. It's so darn hard. But then over time, because you've been praying, you've been going to confess, you've been living to the light, you've been getting support, all of a sudden, from the inside, you're starting to find it gets a little bit easier, a little bit easier. It doesn't always go away, but you feel more peaceful inside. You got this new power within you yeah. to change. Just this week, we were going to the, my wife and I went over to, to the movie theater to pick up our daughter, who I love very much, sweetheart. Uh, but we were yeah. picking her up, and, and she was out talking to her friends outside the movie theater. She saw us and apparently you know, wasn't all that interested that we were waiting for her. <laughs> and, I, you know, no, and I'm sitting there daughters. and I'm thinking, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm a pretty busy guy. I mean, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm going through this thing and I'm kind of working through and I'm getting more and more frustrated. I look over at my wife and she's pretty peaceful. And I said, this is easier for you than it is for me because you died to yourself years ago. Yeah. I'm just learning about it now. Yeah. But yeah. once you just actually get outside of yourself and say, I'm yeah. okay, I'm here for others, it does get you to a totally different place. And I yeah. wouldn't call it easier, but it, you definitely get into a better rhythm. Yeah. You and, know, it comes and you natural. know, the devil's no dummy. He knows how weak we are in the flesh. Yeah. And he'll take and put the most vivid images in your mind, especially in the area of, of lust and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But other That's one of your favorite too. subjects, isn't it? Dave? Well, because uh, it's, it's, huge. You know, it it's huge. It is. It's huge. It's huge. It's out the here one that gets guys the most. Here. But that's yeah. not the only thing, but I just yeah. wanted to talk about that because. I find myself even in the most innocent situations, and then all of a sudden, the most vivid thing comes into my mind. Or, Danny, you can, you you can do this, or it's okay to go out and do this, or do whatever. You know, just putting yeah. thoughts in. But what you have to do, for everyone out there, is immediately recognize it, yeah. what it is, and get away from it. Run yeah. to Jesus. Run, yeah. Get away right now, because He'll do. The flesh is weak. We'll give in, like you said. It takes a long time. It's not like, okay, I make up my mind. I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. In the I'm not going to do this anymore. You're yeah. going to be in trouble because yeah. the next day you could be, or maybe the next yeah. hour you're going to do it. That thought that comes in our mind, that's not a sin. That's a temptation. That's exactly. what we do with it. That's right. what, once, once we allow it to enter, yeah. and then get back in. And it becomes, controls us, and that's when we get addicted to porn, the alcohol, yeah, the yeah, drugs, the yeah. anger, the, all these things. Can we talk about that for a second? Because it is these addiction type sins yes. that, that have a sin component, but also an addiction component that are so difficult to get out of. Yes, and yeah. I, we're talking about avoiding falling in, but there are a lot of guys out there right now who are listening. I'm up to my eyeballs. Who yeah. aren't worried about how to avoid falling into They're it. In. They're trying to figure out how the heck do I get out because this yeah. seems desperate and hopeless. How, what are some steps we can take? to climb back out, claw back out, and get back on the path to a fallen Christ. Well, I think the, the, the ones that, that the easiest that I can just take it from the AA program is one, admit steps. that you have a problem. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that you have it. to do something and it's bigger than you, that you need not only help from human help, you need divine help in this situation too. The Lord wants you to go, like in my case, He sent me to AA. And then he start working on the spiritual part of my life. But I had to get that addiction under control. And that's where a lot of guys help. are. Regardless of the addiction, right. it could be alcohol, could it be drugs, matter. could whatever be porn, whatever it is. You have to yeah. recognize it, seek professional help many times. Right. And then start walking down the path and then the Lord's going to direct you. And the key, other part, oh, go ahead, Brian. The key component of addiction, though, is denial. Yes. So this idea of recognizing a problem is a huge step. It's not just something that you can do. It's something that you have to pray about and, and just surrender at some point. Usually when you get beat up bad enough. Right, but the devil say, you're not, don't you're believe not. all that He stuff. lies to you. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not that deceiver. bad. You read it in scripture. The great deceiver, he says, Danny, you're not, look, all, everyone's doing everybody's that. Everybody's worse yeah. than you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, uh, we all have an addiction. Yep. And it's an addiction to sin. Mm -hmm. human, every, the human heart is attracted to sin. It's not, and the, uh, it's a terminal problem and it's killing us. Jesus came to deal with that problem and give us a capacity to change. And I think a lot of guys out there feel like, you know, change just doesn't seem real, man. I mean, is, re is real change actually possible? Can I become a different person? Look at your change. Look at my change life. I mean, I remember there was a time in my life when I was in my 20s and 30s, just in this specific area of sexual lust, I'd fall here, I'd fall there in different ways, be tempted, I'd give into some temptation. I thought, man, am I ever going to get through this? I can't believe how, I mean, I do believe, Lord, how much God has changed my heart, my interior drive. It's not like it's all gone. We're going to be six feet under before all the temptations finally go away. But, but I like to say, a uh, fruit grows in the right environment. You can't grow a, an apple or, or, an, or an orange tree in Alaska or the North Pole, right? You've got to grow it in the right environment, in the right place. If we're going to grow as Christians and get free, we've got to plant ourselves in the right kind of soil. That is daily prayer, reading of Scripture, going to confession, receiving the Eucharist, honestly opening our lives to brothers and being accountable, yep. totally brutally honest. 
This is, these are the Achilles heels. This is how temptation happens in my life. Stand with me, brothers. I know a three right. bolt, th whole, three whole fold cord. How do you say that? <laughs> three fold cord. Three fold cord. <laughs> it's not easily broken. It's not broken. easily bad. That not easy, easy for you to say. It's easy for me to say. But when we lock arms and we're totally honest with each other, that's a big help. It's a crucial thing because we're embarrassed to be, be that honest. Us. Well, nature and grace work real well here because the power of sacramental confession is huge and it's enormous and it's irreplaceable. And at the same time, the natural assistance of brothers who provide accountability and assistance. We've got to change our habits. That's gonna take grace, it's gonna take decisions, it's gonna take friends, all of these things to begin a path of, of recovery to be able to develop the strength so that we can begin to walk. Here's what we gotta be careful of guys out there, is this, you mentioned we gotta do this, we gotta change, and you said begin. This isn't a quick fix deal. You didn't right. get in it quick, right. you're not getting out of it quick. Now the Lord can do it that fast if he wants. Usually. We have to learn along the way, and we're going to stumble. We're going to fall. He fell three times. We've got to get up. This is a long haul. It's going to yeah. take time, especially if you're really addicted to something. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a fight. That's day to day. It's one day at a time. It's one day at a time. Or if it's not process, even a day, yeah. half a day or yeah. an hour, whatever yeah. it is, just we didn't get, get into this thing. mess overnight. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while. Yeah. And what you talked about, it, and, and both of you guys alluded to this, we need others around us, yeah. and that is another key to recovery. In addition yeah. to those steps that Danny yeah. talked about, is that. It's, it's, a, it's a we thing. Yeah. I don't do this by myself. And we're talking about spiritual warfare. We don't fight this battle alone. Yeah. Here's the power of the flesh though. The flesh is amazing in that it gets stronger. If we've got bad habits, yes. we're actually better at the bad habits than we used to be because yeah. we keep practicing. That's true. Yeah. And it, when we first start to turn, it'll be very difficult because the habits are so strong. Yeah. But as we break those bad habits and build good habits, then the good habits become stronger and stronger. It's like a muscle. And as we train it in the right direction, it's amazing what God has built us to be able to do. And when, he, when we strap grace to that through the practice of the faith, oh my goodness, you can really begin to walk yeah, with the can angels. We, can we just say a little prayer just for a minute? For the, there's guys listening yeah, who right. feel trapped. Could we just pray before we have to wrap it up? But right before okay? you do that, let's do this. Don't have much time. Lombardi you know. says, flesh, the, uh, weakness makes us cowards. If our flesh were out of shape, we're going to be cowards. If we're in shape, it's going to, it's going to have to get in shape. And one of the ways you get in shape is by prayer. Yeah. Let's pray. We have a couple of minutes. Let's pray. Let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for forgiveness, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, for his blood, the power of his new life, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, every one of us are weak, and we pray for every man and woman who's listening right now, whose heart is broken, they feel trapped, caught in darkness. Lord, we pray that you'd shine your light, yes. a light of hope, new grace and power in the Holy Spirit in their lives. Yes. They could know your love and the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Lord, we thank you that you shed your blood to wash away our sin, to left, leave us as white as snow. We thank you for that grace today. Let us live in it together. Lord, we just ask you right now that all the people out here that are listening, that are maybe in bondage to alcohol, to drugs, to anger, to whatever it is, to lust, to porn, you know what it is, Lord. Let them recognize it in their life. Let them know that they can come to you, that you love them no matter what they've done, no matter how bad, Amen. that you are here to forgive them. Amen. And Lord, we've been talking about our flesh, but it was your flesh that won our salvation. Crucified on the cross and risen from the dead, you have promised us eternal life with you. We yield to you, Lord. We desire that you would bring your grace to us in new and amazing ways so that we can begin to walk with you and follow you with, and become the men you desire us to be, Lord. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 In the name of the Son, Father, the Holy Spirit. Son, the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Feel better. Hey, yeah. it's good. Better. Prayer is good. We're going to get the last word from the end zone and open our email bag next on Crossing the Goal. As Danny was mentioning uh, earlier in his talk, he talked about lust and the inappropriate times that lust comes to us and uh, struggle with that. And his recommendation to ask Mary is a, is a great tool. You know, it's an embarrassing thing. It's nothing that, that we're proud of, but it's part of us. You know, as somebody mentioned earlier, it stops 15 minutes after you die. You know, and until that time, we have to fight it all the time. And knowing other guys are suffering from the same problems uh, is encouraging to me. And I know that we can work together and try to, try to defeat it.
We have reached the end zone now in our show on the flesh as we continue the series on spiritual warfare. And before we get the last word from our Crossing the Goal team members, nice hat, Coach. Hey, it's <laughs> getting red, huh? Let's go to the email bag first and to Columbus, Ohio, a question from Anthony who says, why doesn't the church speak more vigorously about the issue of sexual addiction? He says, I've noticed many Protestant churches provide recovery groups and Bible studies to assist men dealing with this issue. I think it's a great question, and I think in some ways, I mean, the world would actually say the church speaks too much about sexual sin, and so we have to find the right venue. I think one of the challenges is, is mass the appropriate venue where you've got families and young children, and I think what we need to do is we need to find new opportunities to speak to this. This is one of the reasons we take this show on the road and go to our conferences, right. and we hit this hard because you, you've been kidding men if you don't get into this issue right out of the block because a profound percentage of men are just, are just trapped in the starting blocks of trying to pursue Christ on this very issue. Yeah. There are others as well. We don't want to be single issue guys. The, de the devil's creative, but we need to go after this. We need to find other ways within the church, men encouraging men, other men. We are the church, and we, it's not just a hierarchy. I was just going to say that we yeah. are the church. The yeah. church isn't just yeah. the, the formal yeah. church. It is that, but it's it, we do it. We're doing yeah. it on this show. We do it out there. You do it on your day-to-day -day basis when you come in contact with people. Confession. You get a lot of guidance in confession that way in the church. A lot of times we don't do it. Like Curtis says, it's hard to do it in mass sometimes because yeah. of the people. But in perfect uh, areas like retreats and things mm -hmm. of that nature, you can do it. All the men's conferences across the country that yeah. have been growing, every one of them addresses this issue yes. pretty vigorously. And they encourage the formation of small groups. And right. this is really where this That's issue where is best addressed. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Also a question out of Los Angeles from Paulo who says, I left the church in 1967. I'm just now coming back. I would like to recommit my life to Jesus Christ and be faithful to Him. Can you help me? I'd well, say, uh, go ahead. No, you go. No, you go. All right, I'll go. Paulo, <laughs> I, I, uh, first of all, <laughs> welcome back as you're, as you're being drawn back. And uh, yes, you can. In fact, you don't need to wait. Uh, right now, in the privacy of your own heart, you can commit your life to Christ, mm -hmm. which is the first and important and necessary step in moving back to Him. And then you need to get to the local Catholic church and go back and make a good confession. Uh, and begin to meet some Catholics. But today that journey begins with you uh, in the privacy of your own heart, rededicating your life to Christ, telling Him you're sorry for drifting, you want to come back, you want Him to be the Lord of your life. Uh, and then to begin that life by getting plugged into the local Catholic Church. Well said. It's Diddle. all out there. All right, let's get the last word on the flesh as we continue with our spiritual warfare. Peter? Brothers, we, when we battle with the flesh, many times what accompanies us in our failing is shame and guilt. And I want to read a passage to you that I want you to take to heart today. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. Stand on that truth. The devil wants to drive you in the ground with shame and condemnation. Stand up and don't accept it. I think that principle, Peter, to build upon it is just the urgency. We're told in Psalm 95, it's repeated several times in the New Testament, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If there's a movement of grace in your heart, then now is the time to respond, not tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. We need to meet God in the present moment and yield our life to Him. Man, you know how many times the devil uses the flesh to tempt us. You know it, you feel it, you, you, you just feel it coming on. Run immediately away to Jesus before it's too late. We've talked a lot about the devil in these past few shows. Our next show is going to be completely focused on him. For Peter Herbeck, Curtis Martin, and our coach, Danny Abramowitz, I'm Brian Patrick. We'll hope to see you next time here on Crossing the Goal. So for Peter Herbeck, <laughs> I almost said Peter Curtis. For Peter Curtis. Okay, so can I pick it up from there? Danny and myself. For Peter, her for Peter, rabbit. Danny got the rat. Put it back on. Oh, what's up? Do this one. Here you go. What's up? Hey, bruh. <laughs>